YouTube land. It's your girl, Makar from Cougar's Closet, getting me in some me time. How y'all doing? So listen, I'm on this Quora blog, and I really, really like the Quora blog. If this is your first time joining me, I'm on Quora, and I like to go on here. Like I said before, this is for the newcomers. I like Quora because it it is a community that are very sensitive to people's reality. There's a lot of people right now um, in this transition, and that's why I mess with this core, that's going through different things, different heartbreaks, uh, different failures. And some people don't know how to um, deal with these things, how to combat them, how to get over them, how to win. And what I like with core is this community is a friendly uh, blog uh, community where they help you find answers um, to 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 get past whatever you are going through. That's what I like about Quora. So um, I'm going to read um, this one. This one talks about um, if your partner gets chronically sick right after marriage, should you go or should you stay? If you got married to someone who became chronically sick immediately after getting married and there is no cure, how likely are you to leave your spouse? And see, before I get into this, let me say this too. I have heard situations or women tell me situations that happen, right? Where they couldn't see through the the situation. But I didn't say anything. I just listened to their story. I knew um, a lady that she was in her, like, late 50s, and she couldn't find, you know, the love of her life or whatever. And so we worked together. And she was telling me this story where finally she found the love of her life because I love to hear how people come together. This wasn't... um the best romantic story um but like i said I, I like to listen to anything that has to do with love or how two people get entangled i love it because i i'm infatuated with love although i can't find it um but it was this lady right she was in her 50s and she 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 couldn't find a man and finally she found love for the first time and so I asked her, you know, how did it come about? And this is why we was working from side by side or on a conveyor belt or something. So she told me that she had found the love of her life. She And, and basically after they got married, like he died like three to six months after. And I asked her what happened or how they met rather. She told me she was by herself one day and she wanted to go to the mall and she was walking around and she went to the mall and all of a sudden this guy came up to her and they started hanging out and they started kicking it and they fell in love and they started doing this and they started doing that and right right it is. It was just a fairy tale. Well, she said she got up to go to work or whatever and it was a normal day like, you know, whatever, whatever, after they had tied the knot. Somewhere in this six-month journey or whatever. And she said it was a regular morning or whatever. She got up, you know, he was prancing and dancing around the house or whatever, whatever. So, as she gets to work later on, she gets a call that she needs to get to the hospital. So, she leaves work or whatever and she goes to the hospital or whatever. And what's them things, arrhythmic, them things in your head or whatever, her hug, aneurysm. Something along the lines where he had an aneurysm or something or something or something was going on. Blood clot somewhere, something or something. I don't know. It's been so long, y'all. But the bottom line was they opened the man up. And when they opened him up, I don't know if she said it was uh, a blood clot in his leg or something. But it was something going on. But whatever, when they opened him up. It traveled up to his head and it busted and he died immediately on the spot. Now, for some of these stories, like I said, I don't want to never ruin or crash anybody's dream. But 
when she told me that, that sounded like a man that already knew he was sick and a man that already knew he was dying. And maybe he was, she was walking through the mall and he was the, she was the angel hours. or whatever. And, you know, he wanted to spend his last days. You know, there's, there's so many things that could go into that. Or maybe he was single all his life and he never wanted anybody seriously. And maybe he probably wasn't good to his kids and he knew, you know, nobody was going to be around. So he just kind of saw her and stole her light, you know, and, you know, whatever. But whatever, she got something out of it because she had never been married before. So I know about these situations on core because I've met people in these type of situations. So nothing on core is far-fetched to me. Like I can relate so deep to it because I, I've crossed the paths of so many lives with so many stories like this, like with people going through these type of situations or traumatic situations or not being able to see or whatever the deal is. I've, I've, I've dealt with all of these things. So I, I, I really like this blog here. So what would you do if you um, married somebody and all of a sudden they became sick or they didn't tell you beforehand that they were sick? And I did a video um, about this. It wasn't geared all the way towards this. I was talking about some stuff and somehow it got wrapped into this about, you know, sometimes you do have to be careful because people, sometimes people, just, just sometimes people. If you got married to someone who became chronically sick immediately after getting married and there is no cure, how are you likely to leave? Are you likely to leave your spouse? So we got 22 comments on here. Before my husband and I got married, he was over 500 pounds, but I didn't care about the outside. The inside was beautiful. He was afraid that he wouldn't be here much longer. Well, he knew, so he wasn't trying to do anything, you know, um, crazy or anything by her. He knew. He was afraid that he wouldn't be here much longer at his weight. And I told him that I wouldn't willingly go into a marriage with someone who knew they were going to die soon. But if we got married and then he got sick, I was in for it for the long haul. When we first got married, he walked with a cane, so I did all the grocery shopping. We shared the housework with him doing what he could from a sitting position. He vacuumed and moved a chair into the next spot. He had a tall stool in the kitchen so he could sit and cook, cook and do dishes. He eventually had a gastric bypass and was losing weight. No more cane, able to get on his knees to clean the bathroom, but by the time I was diagnosed, but by, she was, but by the time I was diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis, some days I could hardly walk and rarely able to lift a pan off the stove. So I applied for SSDI and not having the stress and strain of working helped tremendously. After 12 years of marriage, he was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. I ended up being his 24-7 caregiver at the end. When he passed at home, the hospice nurse came out and had to bathe him before calling the funeral home. And I, and I asked if I could help and felt so honored that I could do this for him. I would give anything to have my husband back, but wouldn't trade the experience of caring, him, caring for him for anything. It was wonderful that each of us was able to care for each other when, when we needed it. I mean, I was able to take care of him when he first when we first got married, then he then he was fit and able to care for me when I needed it. And in the end, I had the strength and ability to care for him. Now that's fair. I'm all about fairness. He didn't try to bamboozle her. He told her off top he was sick. But some mates don't do this. And you marry them and then you find out they sick. And then when you file for a divorce because you feel like you've been robbed and you feel like you've been cheated, now everybody, the family, want to talk about you like you a dirty dog for leaving when he got sick when the truth was he or she didn't tell you that they was sick. You know, and they knew they were sick 
and the family might have knew they were sick. And sometimes the adults get into things and their family don't know they're sick. But that person knows. So let's let's go into the comments and see what's going on. My son got married and within a year he was diagnosed with MS. Within the next year, he was mainly confined to a wheelchair. Then had They had been married for 11 years this year. They are so much in love with each other, and it was never an option for my daughter-in-law to leave, even though he said she could she could, and there would be no hard feelings. I love my daughter-in-law, and she takes great care of my son. Now, that's a nice story, you know, because she really did love him. Th these are nice, clean stories, but like I said, keep in mind, sometimes everybody don't get nice, clean stories. Somebody wrote, it's a blessing to be married to someone who really cares for you no matter what condition they are in. Enjoy the love. I am lucky too. My husband tells me that, it's, that, it's, that it is his job to take care of me. I do what I can, but I have fibromyalgia and other issues which are painful. But luckily, I don't have strong pain and response. That's a beautiful thing, you know, when you ain't having good days and your mate is around the house and they helping because they love you. They ain't out on the streets. A lot of, I know a lot of men, you know, when their wives get sick or their husbands get sick, they take advantage of this situation and they out in the streets cheating and in the bed, you know, in between the sheets with somebody else because they don't want to deal with coming home to this. This is, this is not the way that they intended for their story to go. So, you know, a lot of times people handle things in different ways. And sometimes cheating comes out as one because now you got to be real with yourself. You're dealing with dead weight that you had no idea. It's like a ton of bricks or cement block just landed on you out of nowhere and cut your dream off. I understand like every aspect of all of these, but so far I'm getting beautiful stories. Let's see. We'll sure remember for better or for worse in sickness and in health. Of course, if sickness is a deal breaker, you probably married the wrong person. Let me see if I can find something else. This is what marriage is really about. So, I really can't find it. That marriage is mutual understanding between love and souls. If it was my husband, boyfriend, or child, I would stay, of course. If it is my mom and she was not a narcissist person, I would stay. Anyone else, you are on your own tour. That takes a hell of a lot of strength, washing your husband after he passed. I know that while I would do that for my wife if it came to it, I'd be falling apart. I'm sure he keeps watching over, over you. So these are pretty much all good things, but I have heard um, a lot of horror stories that didn't go so well um, because, like I said, the finessing of the relationship, you know, you're not coming forth from the beginning, um, telling somebody what you got going on, but all of these were nice, nobody tried to shade anybody, nobody tried to finesse nobody, nobody made them sign up for nothing that they weren't supposed to sign up for, nobody put them in a situation they weren't supposed to be in, everybody was honest and everybody was up front, and I like these stories right here, so you personally... How would you take a situation if you, because that's a serious situation. You just gave your vows to somebody, you know, and right after you say, I do, you're all supposed to be, you know, if if you got the finances right then and they're boarding a plane, you know, on y'all honeymoon. But instead, um, one of y'all is sick and stricken and on the couch and things didn't turn out right. But then you have to be careful too, you know, um, when you get somebody and and they really love you for you, but then when it, if they get sick and they wasn't trying to bamboozle you and you leave them, because a lot of times what happens is God turns that situation around and you be done left them and you be done seen them in a year or two and they might be totally healed from what they was going through. You know, God, 
you know, my father behind the scenes, I, I've seen him do so much magic. I, I've seen him do so much, you know, right out of the and pizzazz and pop, 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 pop. I, I've seen him do twinkle, twinkle. I've seen him do a lot of diff different things, you know, where the person that fleed wished they hadn't. Of. And the person, my father, like when he hit, he don't miss. Like, he bring them so, he, he give them so much health and abundance. Like, the person is... They got enough health to, to extend to you, you know. So so some of these situations you, you have to be careful about because, like I said, it can be a finesse game or it can be the real deal. But how would you handle this if this situation happened to you? How I would handle it, I would have to determine if this person was really hiding something from me you know, and they did not share or disclose this information with me, or if they all of a sudden got stricken with something, you know, then that that's my obligation to be there. But if you fin you finessed me, I'm, I, you know, made me sign up for something because if you had gave me the option, I would have stuck around. You know, we might not have um, got married on paper. You know, but I we could have been friends and lovers, and I took care of you. You know, you didn't give me that option. Or a fair trade if you got assets and money and you knew that you was really sick and you just needed somebody to take care of you and I'm getting some out the deal and you leave me whatever you leave me because I was there for you. You know, all these relationships, whether people want to admit them or not, these new relationships ain't too much love around like this anymore. You That's like finding a needle in a haystack. Most of the time, if somebody steps to you uh, relationship-wise, there's something in it for them. It, you have to treat relationships. My, my best friend, Adrian Ball in Cincinnati, told me his mother told um, him this, and it, it stuck to me. Um, and this was years and years and years ago. That you have to treat relationships like business. And in this day and age and time, you really do. Because most of the time, when people step to you, they are stepping to you for something that you got that they can see that they after that you can't see. It ain't too much love around here, not old-fashioned love. That would be really like 1% to 3% of the population. Like a lot of times, majority of these people get married, 80% of these people end up getting married, and they find out 10 or 15 or 20 years from now when they partner fall from a divorce that it wasn't about the love. They was trying to get up under them to figure out how to acquire their assets and run off with them. Run off with the horse, the buggy, and the carriage. Like, I know these people. Like, I've I've, I've, I've been living this life before I started living this life. I, I know these people. But anyway, y'all, let me get over here and get ready to kill this damn ant because I found a new one. And I, I, oh God, I sprayed my butt off yesterday, but I found a new one. The saga continues. Cougar's closet. How would you handle that? Let me know at the bottom. Mwah.